This is a wrestling classic, Justin. I'm here with none other than WWE Hall of Famer and the legend himself. It's a privilege, Stone Cold Steve Austin. How are we doing today? Man, I'm doing good. We just released Double IPA here at El Segundo Brewing Company. It's a great day to be at the office. So my very first question is, how did the partnership with El Segundo Brewing Company begin? How did it start? Turns out a long time ago when I had an agent. My agent went to high school with Rob Croxall, the owner of El Segundo Brewing Company. I was originally going to start off in Texas, but the brewery down there and I could not see eye to eye. Once me and Rob sat down at the table, we liked each other as people and visions for beer. So they're in the partnership form, and we've been at it for eight years now, and we're very happy together, and they make awesome beer. So initially, I had the Broken Skull IPA. They sent me some to Canada. I did the beer smash. I drank them. But now we've got the double IPA and the American Lager. What made the expansion happen? What was the idea? Well, it was just a simple case of, you know, through my uh, progression of drinking beers, I've drank every light beer known to man. Yeah. You know, it's been a big part of my life, and I'm very passionate about it. And so finally there came a, a period in time where I said, hey, what are these craft beers really all about? I thought it was like a snobby, yeah. snarky thing, yeah. but it's just an, an independent endeavor, right? At, at a smaller scale. So I started to get into the Pale Ls, and then as I kind of started to keep, to keep going into the Pale Ls, I tried my first IPA. It was a little too hoppy for me. When I went back to the Pale L, it wasn't hoppy enough. So I graduated to the IPA level. And so I'm a hophead now. We have three beers out right now. Yeah. We're thinking about uh, another beer down the road, but I'm a hophead. Everybody else said, dude, you're normal beer drinkers. We, you know, there's got the, the number, the top five beers in the world are, are the top five beers in the United States, let's yeah. say that. So people were clamoring for a regular beer, let's just call it a lager. Yeah. So due to popular demand from the public, we created Drug Skull American Lager. That beer comes in at about 4.8 percent. It's a great beer, but I still go to the, to the hops and I go, I, you know, Broken Skull, you know, IPA. Fair enough. And then people said you know, the only logical next step to make was, hey, do a double IPA as well for 316. Here we are, 316.23. That's why we came out with the double. Is there any way you can give us a teaser of what this other beer you guys are thinking about is? And, <laughs> well, just, just think of uh, something around 11 to 13%. If someone wanted to eat a steak with a Broken Skull IPA, what's the best cut of steak you think they should have? Mignon, yeah, medium rare. Yeah. There you go. I, another quick question I have for you. There was a video that went viral on social media where you were helping a, a comedian out getting food from a fast food restaurant. What is that all about? What was Stone Cold Steve Austin doing at a fast food restaurant through a drive through What fast food restaurant was that? I'm not 100% sure. I have the video, though. Oh, I can't remember. I think it was for a TV show. Oh, yeah, something we're working on right now. What is that yeah, TV yeah. show? Uh, to be determined. To be determined, so we can't talk about that now. Um, another quick question I have for you is you came out of retirement last year for WrestleMania and you wrestled Kevin Owens. What made you come to that decision and was it a difficult decision? You know, I got a call from WWE and said, hey man, would you like to take part in you know, WrestleMania 38? And it was in Dallas, Texas, so it's kind of a sentimental thing of, you know, I played football right outside of Dallas and I started in the Sportatorium, yeah. home of the world famous Von Eric family. And so what fitting way, I, I always said I would never get back in the ring, I was done, but I always said I would keep the door open if the stars aligned properly. They did. Uh, they presented a storyline or, or just an angle, a short angle with Kevin Owens, who I absolutely love, who's golden on the mic and awesome in the ring. And once they said his name, you know, the creative process kind of continued it and to what it was. And not to really be like a full blown match, but like a, a talk segment that turned into of what a match would be. No, 100%. It was so great. I love Kevin Owens, and I was happy to share the ring with him. Is there a chance the stars might align this year and we might see you at WrestleMania? You know, I uh, haven't heard anything. You know, we're literally, as we speak right now, probably two weeks away, and it's the biggest show of the year. I think they have. Right now, I think the WWE has got as good a roster that, that they've had since the Attitude Era. Yeah. They've they got a deep roster, so I, I think so many guys and gals need those coveted spots. They've got plenty of names to draw from, plenty of talent to draw from. I think they should shine the light and the cameras on their current superstars. Will you still make an appearance at all? Uh, to be determined. Talking about the Attitude Era, I want to ask you, you've been yeah. part of so many great moments, whether it's the Zambonis, the beer trucks. The monster trucks, the cement trucks, a lot of trucks. Um, you know, truck driver. Yeah, Deadpan McMahon, that's a very popular one that a lot of people have. What is your favorite moment? Man, I know it's tough. It's yeah, tough. It's hard because, you know, a lot of times I tell people, when you're dragged out on the road, I mean, sometimes living this life, it's a hard life. 
and you know we had good times, bad times, just like anybody else. But you're yeah. on the road, so a lot of times when I went to Monday Night Raw, it was like going to therapy for me. So when I heard, hey man, you're doing this, you're tearing yeah. this up, you're tearing up. I specialize in tearing things up, and I'd be it's like therapy for me. Yeah. So there were so many great moments, and I remember them all. But to just to pick one single favorite, it's hard. I am proud. I love the Zamboni, run off top of it. Yeah. The Vince, Canadian to me loves line. that. <laughs> and then, but I also love driving that cement truck in because that wasn't a traditional cement truck. I had to fold down all those gates, hit the lever, and they didn't have me a mark to hit. That was all on a live TV. Oh, wow. So there's no room for error. And the cherry on top was, you know, when we planned that out, we never knew that passenger side window was going to blow like it yeah. did. And when it did, that yeah. was kind of the thing. It just set it over the, the top is like, you know, the, the exclamation point on the state yeah. I just tore up his damn new... And the glasses break in. So yeah. That was kind of the most plan, but there's been so many good ones. Working with Booker T and the grocery store yeah. and stuff up. That was also a great one. Yeah. All, they set me... Let me just say this. WWE put Stone Cold Steve Austin in so many good situations that, you know, they propelled my career. Oh, 110%. Um, we're here at Austin Under Brewing Company right now. You did this last year for 316 Day. Is this going to become kind of an annual thing? Man, it might as well, I mean, because, you know, it's, it's really interesting because I cut the Austin 316 promo back in 1996 in Milwaukee, yeah. Wisconsin. You know, I wasn't supposed to win that pay-per-view initially. I was going to be Triple H. Yeah. Uh, they had hugged at the Garden. They broke KFA. Uh, couldn't punish Sean because he was the world champion. So they punished Triple H. He was going to be the chosen one. We're walking uh, TV in Worst for Mass one time, and I hear this voice behind me, and it's Vince. He goes, hey, Steve. You got a second? That's the boss man. Yeah. Yeah, I got time. He goes, I just want you to know, in two years, you win. I mean, in two weeks, you're going to win King of the Ring. Yeah. I'm like, okay, and I went about my business. So I go out there and wrestle Mark Merrill. This was all such a fluke. All things happened for a reason. Mark, in the middle of the match, kicks me in the lip. Yeah. I go to the hospital in my trunks and get stitched up. I come back from the hospital. As soon as I step out of that ambulance, there's Michael Hayes, Doc yeah. Hendricks. He tells me that Jay could cut a religious-based promo on me. Boom. I was thinking about, you know, John 316 signs at the end of the end zone when they were kicking, you know, field goals and point after. So I said, oh, Austin 316, I got some there. I didn't tell anybody. And so all of a sudden I go out there, me and Jake have a short match. Yeah. Because of the busted lip, he had already cut the promo, planted the seed. And when Doc Hendricks threw to me yeah. and asked me about being the king of the ring, that's when I launched off into just talking that string of trash and say, hey, man, you sit you sit there and you thump your Bible and you say your prayers. It didn't get you anywhere. You know, talking about your Psalms, talking about John 316. Austin 316 says, I just whipped your ass. And as I continued to talk trash, I could hear Vince start yeah. to wrap up my interview to throw the next match. I knew I needed a button on that promo, and I just spat out. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. All on the ad lib, I hit two grand slams and yeah. two at bats that were never supposed to be. That's amazing. That's promo still lives on. It's 316 and we're celebrating. I'm going to ask you one. I want to ask you two more real questions, but I know we can sit here forever. But one question, just because the Canadian in me wants to ask. I always, one of my favorite foods, and the one that I remember the most when I first like remember watching wrestling as a kid was you and Bret the Hitman Hart. My favorite match to this day is you and Bret Hart at WrestleMania 13. How much did that feud mean to you, and what does Bret Hart mean to you? Bret Hart means the world to me, and man, that's almost got me emotional. Bret and I are very close. He saw me coming up when I was in WCW. He knew that I was a guy that he could work with and we could make money together and tell great stories, and he was correct. When he came back from getting his knee cleaned up in 1996, he picked me to work with in Madison Square Garden. We had an old school classic match that was off the charts, and then we went into 13. And then uh, we, you know, we went into a room and we knew what we needed to do. And we went out to the ring and Brett said, hey, and he gave me the idea for something that happened in that match. So I owe a huge part of my career to Brett the Hitman Hart. When you think of realism in the business of professional wrestling and sports entertainment, they don't get any better than Brett the Hitman Hart. I, I like a lot of other guys with a lot of different styles, but if you want realism, determination, grit, and an athletic presentation, it doesn't get any better than him. I love the guy, I respect him, we've wrestled all over the world, and we have a mutual respect for each other. Bret Hart helped make Stone Cold in the largest degree possible. I owe a lot of my career to WWE, who put me in a position. I made the most of an opportunity, but Bret the Hitman Hart for putting me on the map.
Big time. And very last question to wrap things up, and I really appreciate you doing this. It was a privilege. Knowing now everything you've done, everything you've achieved, and the fact that you can still go out there and everybody knows who you are and everything that you've accomplished, do you feel like you've made your younger self proud? Would I make my younger self proud? Yeah. Yeah, you know, my mom used to tell me back in the day, she goes, Steve, if you were a kid, I wouldn't let you watch what you're doing now. Yeah. And I always kind of considered that a compliment because it was kind of edgy. <laughs> yeah. And my mom had great taste. She raised a great kid and yeah. a great family. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't make myself proud. I, I did everything that my mother and my father taught me to do as far as a work ethic. Yeah. And I was never the chosen one. I was an average guy. I, I tried my best. They taught me, you know, how to work hard. And I achieved a lot with, with a break here or there. But to applying myself in, in the world of pro wrestling, I gave it everything I had. I fought through red tape, trials, tribulations, starving, paying dues, the same thing that a lot of guys and gals go through. And I stuck with it. And I did not have a plan B. If it wasn't plan A, I don't know what, what I was going to do. Because I, I truly was set on success. Yeah. And I succeeded. And so it, you know, I take that back to my mom and dad. I'm proud of what I did, and I would have made a young Steve Austin proud. There you go. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick conversation. And I ain't blowing smoke up my ass. I'm yeah. just saying like it is. No, I wanted you not to be humble for that. I wanted you to be honest, Dad, uh, because, you know, we're always trying to make our younger self proud, and I think there's that connection sometimes when you think about what you do. Yeah, absolutely. You go, yeah. You're good at this. you you got a future in this business. Oh, man. thank you very yeah. much. That's a big endorsement. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank it was a pleasure. Buddy. I could keep talking. I have so many other hey, questions. I'd love to keep talking to you, but we uh, we got we to gotta wrap this up. Speech. We got some beer to drink. It's been a long day to me, so if I was stuttering, there's a god dang <laughs> wrong with Steve. It's been a long day. I've been working my ass off, so it's a pleasure to sit down. And I stayed sober this whole time, so now we're going to have some fun. And I've been drinking this whole time. There you go. All right. I hope you guys all enjoy it. We'll see you all next time. Ooh, yeah. Dig it. Nice macho, man. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> It's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night. <laughs>